Hi there, I'm Matt Merrison from Seller Hand. I was going to say on and on, but I'm actually here with someone from on and on, with uh, Will Byron. We're here in the vineyards of the Mornington Peninsula on a slightly breezy but otherwise gorgeous summer day. Um, just having a look at Will's new uh, single vineyard wines that he makes with Casper Herman and Sam Middleton of On and On. Um, we've got the Chardonnay in the glass here. The Chardonnay is from the Turong uh, vineyard in uh, the Mornington Peninsula and it's from the year 2020. So I thought we'd just start, Will, of course. The onset of harvest 2020 was a weird time uh, for everyone in the world. Um, what were the conditions like? We've probably forgotten. Well, 2020 was a funny season. So um, we obviously had bushfires uh, raging uh, uh, down in Gippsland. Uh, so, and with obviously COVID as well. Um, I think it felt like at times that um, the winemaking was uh, a tertiary um, uh, subject, but survival was number one. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, no, it was a it was a cooler year, um, which uh, suits the Turong Chardonnay. It's a warmer side on the Mornington Peninsula, so it's um, I guess it's the the subregion of the Mornington Peninsula closest to Melbourne uh, on a, a flatter area. So it um, doesn't have the altitude that some of the more um, microclimates of Mornington Peninsula get. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier actually, because Chirong is a name that you will hear cropping up quite a lot. It's not one of the sort of more famous, uh, I don't know what you call them, sort of <laughs> communes or, or villages of the Mornington Peninsula, but obviously there's a fair amount of vineyard down there. But we're talking what some people would say was down the hill, as you say, a lower, uh, lower vineyard um, in terms of you know how the hill of Red Hill and some of those high ones work. So picking generally what a bit um, later, than, a bit earlier rather than up the hill? Yes, yeah, look, it can be like six weeks earlier. Right. So typically, Turong um, would be one of the, the regions that gets, well, the sub regions, I should say, the Mornington Peninsula that gets picked earliest down here. So, I mean, we're, well, we're sitting mid February, close to mid February at the moment. I'd say Turong, Chardonnay, and Pinot will probably be coming off in the next three weeks. Right. Whereas um, some of the more high altitude and, and when I say high altitude for the Mornington um, I think the highest vineyards are only a couple hundred meters um, but they'll be coming off six to seven weeks later yeah. yeah I mean we talk about this quite a lot when we talk about the Mornington Peninsula I mean some people would say that it's a, a fairly compact region in some ways but of course there's huge variations as you just said between those I mean on and on has kind of got a bit of a, a floating home because we'll grew up down here um, but also there are vineyards the main vineyard in Red Hill um, and other bits of fruit coming from, from various other areas. But it, within that really quite tiny distance, we're normally talking a 10 minute drive. Uh, yeah, like six week difference is, is, is quite a big thing. Um, so conditions then for this 2020 Chardonnay, um, what, what, when were you picking and, and what were you looking for when you, when you pick? And, and then did, you, did it manage to conform roughly to kind of what your plan was for, for this yeah. one? Yeah, look, it's probably one of the more consistent sub-regions. Um, I guess it doesn't, doesn't get hit with, um, I guess, some of the uh, issues that some of the higher altitude vineyards get. Um, so it's pretty even and it typically gets picked, you know, year to year within a week, um, a week time frame. So, um, which makes it a lot easier from our perspective. Um, but look, always sort of picking on the up curve for us. We sort of, we're looking around that sort of 12 to 12 and a half Bome. Um, because it's a warmer site, it doesn't uh, ever shy away from flavour. And I guess um, in the Mornington Peninsula, I feel like um, you've just got to watch that flavour can kind of get away from you and move into the tropical spectrum pretty quickly. So always sort of, as soon as I sort of start to see some citrus flavours in the fruit, um, I'm getting pretty keen to pull the trigger on, getting the nets off and getting it picked. Yeah, so for me, this is sort of showing quite typical, uh, I think sort of nectarine, sort of white nectarine perhaps flavours. Um, a lemony, uh, grapefruity stuff going on. None of the pineapple or you know tropical stuff that you kind of mentioned. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's right there in that sort of quite citrusy zone. It has again really quite zingy acidity um, to it as well. Um, and we're looking at it just before we were on camera as well. Lovely sort of savoury tones through this wine as well, um, which I know is a part of the plan there. So how do you sort of go around trying to build that balance, that fruit and savoury balance in these wines? I think. I think picking the fruit uh, at, at that stage where before it moves into the tropical flavours you're getting more sour fruit and I think that lends itself a little bit more to those savoury characters. Um, certainly we spend a lot of time um, making sure that the coopers we use um, we're not getting any of those caramel vanilla 
um, characters, which um, I, I personally detest for Mornington Peninsula. I'm sure it works in other regions, but... Because it sort of swings the fruit into an even sweeter sort of zone. Exactly, zone. yeah. I, one thing we don't have to worry about is sweetness of fruit for Chardonnay on the Peninsula. Yeah. Um, I think being in a maritime climate, um, we kind of get, we get those ripe, uh, full flavours in Chardonnay pretty easily down here. So it's more of a job, I guess, trying to just rein them in um, by, you know, picking dates and using the right oak. And then um, we're also handling the fruit. We're oxidising the juice a little bit more um, in the last couple of years. Right. Um, and we're leaving it unsulfured in barrel for pretty much the whole year, just topping regularly. A little bit of lee stirring early, but um, I find that oxidising the juice actually helps in really pushing some secondary sort of characters rather than primary. Um, which has been working really well with um, the winemaking of this Turong in particular the last few years. Yeah, it's inter uh, interesting because I guess a lot of what you what you just said obviously speaks to your experience. I mean, your on and on is what t 14 years old, I think. In this will be the 14th, didn't you? Yeah, so that's um, there's a lot of experience there, and of course you've been working down here on the peninsula for a long time, um, most recently with Stonia as well. But um, you know, it, it speaks of a lot of confidence, I suppose, in both what you do, but also in the fruit. And we were saying, of course, we're, we're, in, we're standing here in an absolutely beautiful vineyard. Um, and it is a, a lovely area, and an area which does command, obviously, very high prices for its fruit. But there's a very good reason for that, and that is it's really, really good fruit. Yeah. And, and you're just trying to, well, A, you're trying to bring out that, the best in that and show it in the wines. But also, I suppose, you're able to do other stuff that shows faith in that and that, 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 that you know it's going to bring it forth you know a lot more sort of confident winemaking essentially yes yeah I mean the morning's potential is made up of quite a lot of very passionate growers owner growers um, and uh, who are fastidious about the quality of their fruit and they I guess they they feel it represents them a little bit so um, typically the fruit we get down here is just pristine um, uh, and you know it's been you, we don't have to worry about a lot of disease down here. I mean, there is obviously is disease pressure, but I think everyone's, I mean, we get such little crops down here that the, you know, the, the price for a ton is, you know, every year is getting more and more and more. So it's just, it's really valuable. And I think everyone respects that. And so, um, yeah, more often than not, we're just getting, you know, stunning fruit turn up at the winery every vintage. Well, it certainly looks very good in this wine. This is the 2020 on and on single vineyard Chirong Chardonnay. Uh, available now from, from Will and Sam and Casper at On and On and I hope you get a chance to try it soon. Cheers Will. Thanks.